All right, just a little inside baseball as we get ready to start. You may have noticed for the past few days, um, when we flipped, um, the, the screen hasn't been centered, and the cross has been kind of tilted and all that. Well, when I put the thing on it where it flips the, the screen so that you can actually read what you see, it, it was shifting the angle of the camera. So, you know what I realized? Y'all don't have to read anything. I'm, I'm not writing anything. So I can just do the mirror image. And, and when I do the mirror image, I'm actually centered with the, the cross right behind me and the candle bopper over my shoulder. So now I'm happy. And if my face seems backwards today, that's why it, it is. That's okay, we're not reading anything, that's good. Well, I'm reading things and you're reading things, but I'm not writing anything for y'all to read. So, with that being said, and that was way too much information, let's begin, we'll do a morning prayer on page 295. Paul was gonna be here on Tuesday, had a doctor's appointment. And right now, when they're opening up, you get your doctor's appointments when you can. So he will uh, be doing music uh, tomorrow, and then there will be the service on Thursday, so. Uh, we'll probably start early at 8.15 with, pre, uh, not 8.15, 8 8.25 with pre-service music, just like we normally would on a, uh, on a Sunday. Uh, hope you're all dry at your home, especially in your basement. Um, and let's carry on. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalmody for today is from Psalm 85, verses 1 through 17. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You withdrew all your wrath and turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Again, uh, a lot of the psalms really are appropriate for this time of life. Uh, the, the how long the Lord help us, save us, all over the place in the psalms. Great book to read. Our lesson for today is Luke 16, uh, 1 through 18. He, that is Jesus, also said to the disciples, and There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do, since my master is taking the management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said to him, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest master for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into eternal dwelling. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful with the in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. 
And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then the good news of the kingdom is preached, and everyone forces his way to him. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, I, I said I would tell a story about my dad, and I will. So I finished my first year of seminary, and I'm home for the summer. And I'm eager, as all young to finish their first year of seminary types are. I want to go preach, and dad's the pastor. When are you going to let me preach? And my dad says, well, I'll let you do this Sunday. And picks up a Sunday. And the gospel text for that Sunday is Luke 16, 1 through 13, the parable of the dishonest manager. And this is actually one of the, the texts that caused people no end of consternation because Jesus is basically praising a guy who cheats his master. He's going to get fired, but before he actually turns in the book, he cooks him. He goes to, you, you owed my master, let, let's see. A hundred measures of oil, sit down quickly and write 50. This isn't a small amount. The, the, a, a measure of oil would be like, like probably like 20 barrels of oil today. I mean, it, 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 these are, are large, like thousand measure gallons of oil. Uh, think of this as, as metric tons or so. I mean, it, it, this is big numbers. And so yeah, uh, here, I'll, I'll save you $100,000. Here, I'll save you $50,000. Giant discount. Well, what's, what's he doing? He's making himself a golden parachute. And it seems odd. Why would Jesus praise this guy who's acting like a scoundrel? Well, we need to remember that, that this story, this parable, isn't just told off on its own. Let's go back to the beginning of chapter 15. Because you start off with 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were drawing near him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told a parable. The parable of the lost sheep. You, you find the one lost sheep and you rejoice. The parable of the lost coin. You find the coin and you joy, rejoice. You tell the story of the, the prodigal son. The son comes home and you rejoice, and that's the goal. But then you have that older son. You don't know who's going to come in. It's all about working. All right, Pharisees, how are you about your working? Because you're, you're all in love with your money. You want to play the game. The master commends this guy who's going to get fired because he played the game well. What he does is technically legal. It's utterly unethical, dishonest. But until he turns in the books, he has the right to change whatever. That, that, he's the authorized agent. His, he has signing rights on the checks. Not been taken off yet. And the master commended, um, that word there is, <clears throat> I, think, I think it works very well if you think in terms of our phrase, I gotta hand it to you. It doesn't mean, oh, I'm so glad you did that. It's like, no, no, I got, it, it's that, that grudging respect, that hat tip. Okay, that, he was thinking on his toes and he pulled one over on me. It, it's that grudging respect. And the point that Jesus makes is, the sons of this world, the wicked out there, they at least pay attention to how the game is played. Now, what about you, Pharisees? Are you paying attention to how the game is played? Because here I am, and I'm showing you how things are going to work. I am going to forgive people. I'm going to seek and restore the lost. The sinners are going to get to come to the table because they will be forgiven. And guess what you are? You're a sinner. You should be seeking forgiveness too. That should be what you should be doing. You should understand how you live. You live by generosity from God. Forgiveness, grace freely given. But you're not faithful. You're not focused on the truth. That's why the opposite of faithfulness is... Uh, wait, here. Uh, uh, if you've not been faithful and unright... Uh, <clears throat> let, me, let me back up. Uh, verse 10. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest much. It's not one who's honest and, and dishonest. It's if you're paying attention to, to God, and if you are faithful, you're going to get the point. But if you're running around 
blowing smoke up your own skirt about how great you are and trying to get the best spot at the table and all that type of stuff, you're missing the point. The whole point of, of the church, and I, I'll refer to the, the Old Testament church as that too, the, the people of God was to be those who were going to proclaim the coming of the Messiah, to be the redeemer of the world. And you've missed it. You, you've turned the whole religion into just a matter of, let me show how good I am and see what I deserve because I'm awesome. And that's not the point. That is utterly, that's being utterly unfaithful. It's being utterly dishonest about yourself and your own sinfulness. You don't want the true riches of God. You don't want forgiveness. And, and when the Pharisees hear this, they, they make fun of them. No, no, come on. We, we, we know where it's at. We know how our bread gets buttered. You are those who justify yourselves met before men, but God knows what's in your heart. Um, God knows what's in my heart. Only God can judge me. Yes, that should terrify you. If you're apart from Christ and the forgiveness he has given, the fact that God knows what's in your heart should scare you. Okay, do you want to know how it should scare you? <clears throat> think, think about Christmas, all right? What's the purpose of Santa Claus? He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So say, oh, yes, see how great I am. Give me some. You better be good for goodness sake. The point is, don't, don't try to pull the wool over God's eyes. He knows about your sin, and he is accounted for it, and he is going to declare you righteous in Christ. But it's only in Christ. There's only forgiveness there on the cross. In Christ, there is life. Apart from Christ, there is death. Oh, well, no, I'll just be good on my own and get lots of stuff, and you'll die. Don't do that. It's stupid. Well, no, no, I, I, can, I can work the rules. Which is why then he goes on to the example of divorce and adultery and remarriage. And this is one that, that <clears throat> we, we, uh, we get a little bit highly uncomfortable with because divorce is much more of a common part of American life. Um, in part, um, divorce worked differently in the ancient world. If you divorced a woman in the ancient world, you just cut her off and had no support. Um, I think most people from the ancient world, if they saw a modern practice of alimony, would say, oh, well, you haven't divorced her. You're just basically taking a new wife because you're still paying her stuff and taking care of her. It, it, divorce in the ancient world was much more brutal uh, than ours, especially as you cut off a gal and she had no way of supporting herself. And it becomes an image in the Old Testament, of God remaining faithful to Israel even when Israel is faithless to him. That, that the Lord is the husband. The image of, of Christ is the, uh, the bridegroom and the church is bride. That, Paul's not making that up off the top of his head. That, that's an old image from the Old Testament. Go read the book of Isaiah. Go read the introduction to Hosea if you, if you don't get the way this image comes up. It's awesome. Um, and so the point here is you're running around seeking ways to justify yourself to being unfaithful. How you can work, oh, 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 oh. I, 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 I have since uh, improved my wealth and standing so I can move up to a trophy wife. And oh, here's the reason why I can kick the old wife to the curb. That's what you Pharisees do. No, no, that's not the way it's going to work. God doesn't, God's law is designed to show our sin so that we understand our need for the Savior. And don't think that you can weasel your way out of it. You're a sinner. You need forgiveness. Now, the good thing is, God is quick to forgive. I mean, that's the whole reason why Jesus is here. I'm here to bring forgiveness. I don't think we're going to need that. If you don't think you need that, you're dumb and you're going to die. So, don't be dumb. Acknowledge your sin. Confess it. See it. Repent it. And live in Christ. So, uh, I think that'll suffice for the day. Um, the, the parable of the unjust steward is a, a great one. Basically, it's like, yeah, if you're ignoring forgiveness, you're dumb. <laughs> at, le at least the wicked, at least the crooks in the world try to be smart and know how to be a good crook. Be wise as a Christian. Know how you have life. You have life in Christ. Live there. So, with that being said, we'll move on to our catechism lesson for the day. And our catechism lesson for the day, we're going to go over the creed uh, found on page 322. And again, note and contrast something. 
the, the, the folly of the Pharisees who, who fight and scrimp and try to, to do everything to prove their own worth and get everything they have. Listen to the first article of the Creed and its meaning and see how foolish that is. So, what is the first article of the Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house, home, wife, children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. What is the second article of the Creed? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, a purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. What is the third article of the Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. As we just confessed the creed, let's pray the Lord's Prayer and go on to the prayers of the day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, since Paul is going to be here and do music tomorrow, and that adds length, let's do the litany today. So the litany found on page 288. Uh, we'll pray the litany, then any other prayers that are needed, and wrap on up. So let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, from flooding and drowning, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, 
to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring to the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, preserve our land from discord and strife, to give to our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our presence and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessing, to defend all orphans and widows and to provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. We'll pray the prayer. Of, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy to be upon us this day, that you would keep us steadfast in the faith, that you would keep us firmly in Christ, for he is our life. For in him we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Be with us as we go about our various paths this day. Bless us if we are staying home. Keep us safe and secure. Make our home to be a shelter and bastion of health and healing. Be with us if we are going out. Keep us safe in our going about. Be with us as we interact with folk. Keep us safe and help us to produce good, that we all might enjoy the benefits of your hand. Heavenly Father, bless those who are facing illness or disease whether it be this COVID or whether it be any of the normal routine diseases that we, they are facing. Grant them peace, and if it is your will, grant them healing. Bless all those who fight against illness and disease in this world. Give them wisdom and guidance. Bless the work of their hands, for you have given them their talents, and speedily see them to success, that we might once again more fully and openly enjoy your blessings of body and spirit. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day. O Lord, keep your church in your perpetual mercy. And because without you we cannot but fall, preserve us from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. All right, folks, take care, be well, have a good day, and I will see you around. Take care and...